What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Last time, we got to see the effects of the Goku Black arc, which ended up playing out a lot differently than normal, thanks to Azir being there. Not only did we get to see his growth, but we got to see more of Goku and Vegeta in this scenario, as well as Gohan's growth, which took a much different path than it did in the original series. But as a result of the Tournament of Destroyers, that means we're going to eventually have the Tournament of Power. Zeno was inspired by this tournament, so this time, we'll be heading to that arc. For this video, let's hit a like over 3500 likes, if we hit that, I'll continue with another part of this series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. So after this arc, there's a bit of change. Azir, Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan continue their training. Although all of them are focused on different things, Goku and Vegeta are focused on their own god forms. For Azir, he's obviously going to be focused on his golden form though. It does have some flaws still, but he feels like he can work that out, especially if he keeps training with Beerus, he might be able to figure out a way around it. He starts using more unique moves too. He knows that not only power is important, but technique and strategy. This is something he learned from Goku, but he always felt like he was too similar to his master. He wants to start changing that, creating some moves of his own. Maybe that'll help spice things up a bit, make his moveset more unpredictable. Over this short time skip, he actually does start getting more independent. One of the things he does to show this is getting a new outfit. This is actually designed by someone that was in my Discord. And sadly, he doesn't have a Twitter or anything where I can credit him, but if you're watching this, you know who you are. But I actually think this would happen too. This outfit shows more similarities to Frieza, and in all honesty, looks a lot more divine than a regular Gi. The funny part about it is Beerus actually suggested it. If this guy's gonna train to become a god, he may as well look the part. Oh yeah, new haircut too. But that's besides the point. What really matters is his transformation. He's trying to improve his golden form more so he can actually use it without too much stamina lost. While Goku and Vegeta further focus on Blue, trying to evolve it in their own ways. As for Gohan, he's actually working on something different. He's still using regular Super Saiyan forms, but in the last part he discovers something brand new, Super Saiyan Rage. He's not too sure about it, and honestly, we don't really have an explanation for it in canon either, so we can kinda go with our own thing here. In canon, it's just Trunks got really mad and unlocked this new form somehow without any explanation, and I don't really like it too much, and I don't think a lot of other people like it, but hey. We just gotta accept it, I guess. The thing we can do, though, is try and make it more unique for this scenario. So our explanation here will be similar, but more rooted in the actual lore. We'll say it's a mutation of Super Saiyan 2, access through pure rage as you'd guess. Instead of evolving it like how Goku did with Super Saiyan 3, this is something more unique to Gohan. We'll attribute it to his hybrid DNA, mainly with him being prone to rage and his high potential. Those two kinda contributed to this and allowed him to access this mutated Super Saiyan 2, which grants power way beyond that form. Not to mention, with Rage, it's only powered more and more. Basically, it's taking Super Saiyan 2 and Gohan's Rage Boost as ingredients, cooking them together into a brand new form like this. And since Trunks was able to actually use it again, we're gonna say Gohan's able to do that as well. After some training, he's able to tap into it once more. This helps him get closer to the level of the others, and even though he may not be on the level of them, he's content with this. It lets him evolve his Super Saiyan forms in his own way. It's something unique to him and something strong. His hybrid potential really helps too. I mean, we've seen how crazy hybrid Saiyan growth can get. As for Azir, he actually does get a new form, or at least a new mutation of his form. It's gonna be true golden, just like what Frieza got. At this point, Azir is so strong that he's even ahead of Goku and Vegeta. And this true golden form is basically him harnessing all the power, being able to use it without any stamina loss. It's a pretty good evolution of it, and Beerus is proud. As is Goku, obviously, but Goku's also intrigued. This will maybe make for a good sparring match. The two could test out their brand new powers together, and have some fun in the process. Beerus and Whis are fine with that. They let the two fight on the planet. Let's just say this fight is obviously in Azir's favor. Of course, Goku by this point has Blue Cow Ken under more control, being able to use it at higher levels even up to times 20. But even with that, Azir's still ahead. It's amazing. Goku knew his potential was great, but this is something else. He's proud of his student and his friend. And like I mentioned, Beerus is pretty happy too. He did want to train Azir to become a god of destruction, and this is putting him towards the path of that. Of course, Beerus is going to try to teach him some more techniques, trying to get him closer and closer to becoming that. He's not too sure if Azir will accept it, but hey, he could at least try. Now let's skip forward a bit, around when the Tournament of Power starts. So in terms of a team from Universe 7, well, nothing's really going to change. You may remember from a few episodes ago that Android 16 actually survived, and they may consider him, but if they ask him, he'd probably just point them to 17 since he's stronger anyways, meaning 17 gets on the team regardless. And as for Azir, he just replaces Frieza, obviously. And even if they don't have Boo on the team, it doesn't matter. This means that it's essentially the same as it was in canon, with the slight and obvious change that Azir replaces Frieza. Pretty simple stuff. And now we have a full team for the tournament, 
meaning we can shift over into the world of Void and actually cover it. And this tournament's gonna go a lot differently than you may expect. So right off the bat, a lot more people actually follow Gohan's plans. Azir sticks with him because the two are friends and he trusts his idea. Obviously a lot of the other fighters will stay close to him. Goku and Vegeta will probably do their own thing, but besides that, well, everyone actually sticks to it. 17 would probably go off on his own too. But this means a lot of Universe 7 is grouped together towards the middle, trying to fend off fighters together. It actually kind of works well. Their teamwork and strategy actually helps them knock some people out, protecting each other in the process. Goku and Vegeta are up against some of the other fighters. Taking out some of the fodder first, but Goku retains some focus on Jiri. He sees the Universe 6 Saiyans, but honestly, they don't really interest him too much here. I mean, they might be strong, but they don't even have Super Saiyan. If you remember to a few parts ago, Kaba never learned it, meaning Kale and Cauliflower wouldn't either. And due to that, Goku probably wouldn't take an interest in them, meaning Kale and Cauliflower would be off on their own, possibly being defeated by Pride Troopers or anyone else that gets to them first. This means Kaba's a lot weaker too, so he actually loses earlier on as well. Things aren't looking that good. Thankfully, they still have Hit, one of the strongest fighters. He ends up facing a really familiar opponent from a few arcs ago, that being Azir. Azir wanted to have a rematch with him. He lost before, but he feels that now he's more than strong enough to take on Hit, and Hit's actually curious to see if this is true. Funny enough, they're even interrupted by Dispo. And casually, Azir shows off some as a new power to Hit. Not only does he turn golden, but he shows one of his new techniques. As Dispo lunges at him, Azir points two fingers out. He splits them apart a bit and begins charging energy in between them. Dispo dodges all these blasts, and Azir spreads his fingers apart a little bit more, making the blast even wider. He then does the same with his other hand, rapid firing these blasts towards him. It's a shame that he can't fly, but he has a way around this. Basically using his hands as jetpacks, he aims these blasts at the ground, using them to propel him upwards. Midair, he focuses. Dispo's attention is now on hit, and with even more speed, Azir launches more of these blasts. With amazing precision, Dispo's able to dodge them barely just because of his speed. But it comes to the point where he can't tell where they're gonna land. Azir even begins shooting them out of his eyes. And then it happens, one of them hits Dispo. This briefly stuns him as he's then hit by more and more, caught in a barrage of these blasts. He keeps getting hit by them, as a hole is drilled through the entire arena, dropping him out of the ring from below. Azir then lands back down. What he was actually using was compressed versions of the Kamehamehas. Another suggestion from my Discord friend before. This is basically him combining what he learned from Goku, as well as what's in him from Frieza. They're like Kamehameha death beams in a way, or something. He uses them not only for rapid attacks, but precise attacks, and it worked pretty well here, especially with how fast Dispo is. But now we could actually face Hit. Azir first creates a smoke screen, and Hit's not sure why because once the smoke clears, Azir is still there. This shouldn't be too hard. He catches Azir in a time lag. He desperately tries to attack Hit, but nothing works. Hit then hits him with one punch, launching him out of the ring. That worked out well. It was pretty quick, but he still used up a lot of energy defeating the strong opponent. Or so it seems. Hit suddenly falls to the ground, being hit by two attacks at the back of his knees. He turns around and is then kicked across the ring by Azir. Wait, he just knocked him out! The real reason Azir made a smoke barrier is because he was actually cloning himself. He knew Hit was going to try to use some time technique, and Azir has more techniques in case Hit wants to try that again. He has ways around it. Hit tries to time skip, but even that doesn't work. Azir is too quick. Just like Goku was able to do, Azir is able to break through it, attacking fast and unpredictably, being able to take Hit out of the ring next. He's glad it went that way. He tested out his abilities, and he was able to get this win. Let's go back to Goku for a bit. He eventually does end up facing Jiren, and that would probably go the same way, with him getting Ultra Instinct. And this makes Universe 11 a lot more wary of Universe 7. They took out Dispo, and someone just fought Jiren, getting pretty close to them. Topo and Jiren are the only ones left from that universe, and Topo decides he's going to do something about it. He begins going around, knocking out some more people. First, he goes after the Namekians from Universe 6, eliminating that universe. Then he starts going after Universe 7, wanting to fight Azir next because he knocked out Dispo. Vegeta gets in the way trying to fight Topo too, and the two of them fight him together. Goku is injured nearby after using Ultra Instinct, and no one's giving him energy yet because Topo is interfering. The two of them have to knock down this wall first. Topo decides not to play around anymore. He goes into his God of Destruction mode, which surprises everyone, especially Azir. That's exactly what he was training for. He remembers Beerus mentioning something about that. Topo's confused. Wait. Is he a candidate for God of Destruction or something? Well, nothing's made official yet, but Azir could tell that Beerus wanted that. In the stands, Beerus shouts. He thought he kept that a secret, but it seems that Azir saw through it. Honestly, he doesn't care too much about it. It might be fun to do. Not only will it get stronger, but he could help guide the universe if he does become a God of Destruction. That could be pretty fun. 
He hasn't really fought too much with Vegeta before, but they should be able to do something against Topo. Hopefully they could work well together. The two of them actually put up a pretty good fight, with Topo learning more about them as he faces them. Interesting, another candidate for God instruction from this universe. Topo was angered at them first for what they did to Dispo, but as they fight, he begins to learn more of Azir's ideals. Apparently in a former life, Azir was a bad guy, and he wants to try and correct that. If he can help people in the universe, that'll help make up for it, and it'll put him at ease. He doesn't know much about his past self, known as Frieza, but still, he knows that he was reincarnated for a reason. Goku wanted Frieza to be reincarnated, but as a good guy. But Azir wants to go the extra mile. He wants to help the universe, doing the opposite of what his past self did, even if it wasn't really him. Topo hears this. He truly is a guy of justice. And as for Vegeta, well, he's Vegeta, but still. He gains a mutual respect from the two of them, although that doesn't mean he's going to go easy on them. He ends up winning the fight. Vegeta doesn't have blue evolution, so it makes it a bit tougher for him to face Topo. And even though Azir is pretty strong and puts up a good fight, Topo's power is simply just too much for them. Right now, the only people left in the ring are their androids, Piccolo and Gohan. Goku's still in the ring, but he's in pretty bad shape. But as they fall out of the ring, Azir and Vegeta lend some energy to Goku. He gets back up, but he still is pretty drained. And there's still quite a bit of fighters left. Topo is still there. Jiren's pretty much untouched. Universe 3 is still in the ring. Plus, Universe 4 has some fighters. They gotta be really careful. Gohan goes into Super Saiyan rage using all of his power, not wanting to hold anything back. He tries to do what Topo did, trying to eliminate as many people as fast as possible. First, he focuses on Universe 4, with Piccolo helping him. And you know, for someone with such great hearing, it was really stupid the way that Piccolo got knocked out in canon. So instead here, let's say he uses his hearing to actually find the Universe 4 fighters. He points them out to Gohan. Gohan's able to take out the invisible fighter, while Piccolo gets the tiny one. And the two of them clean up the rest of Universe 4. The androids then go for Universe 3. Ironic the androids attacking other robots. Goku goes around helping them both, as well as cleaning up whatever other universes are there. Topo's doing the same, but eventually sets his sights on Goku. Since Goku's still a bit worn out, Gohan, Piccolo, and Seventeen jump in, but they can't do much against him. Topo knocks out Piccolo, then going for Android Seventeen and getting him out. His shields aren't effective because Topo's just able to Hakai them. Eighteen is defeated by Universe 3, with Gohan then dropping out. Goku's the only fighter left from Universe 7, and Topo's about to fight him, but suddenly, Universe 3 fuses into Aniraza, but before Aniraza can do anything, a massive explosion comes out of his head. Jiren launches a single blast. It's powerful enough to knock Aniraza right out of the ring, eliminating Universe 3. He walks up to Topo as a two stand in front of Goku. They're the last three people in the ring, but Goku's not going down without a fight. Using what little power he has, he goes into Blue Kyo Ken. But Jiren tells Topo to end this quickly. Goku's unpredictable just like they saw before. Topo gathers a lot of energy, creating a massive purple ball. He throws it at Goku, with Goku pushing it back, trying desperately to stop it. But that wasn't the main attack. Suddenly, Goku loses his footing. Dispo destroys the ring below him. As Goku tries to hold back that one attack from Dispo, he also has to try and regain his footing. Not only does he lose ground, but he's pushed away by Topo's attack. He tries desperately to access more power, trying to get back in the ring somehow. Maybe he can get Ultra Instinct again, but nothing works. He's knocked out of the ring, meaning Universe 7 is now eliminated. They can't believe it. They lost. But before they can even process what happened, Zeno erases them. And that means Universe 11 is the victor, with Jiren and Topo as the last two in the ring. Jiren's content with this. Now he can finally get his wish, reviving his master. But instead, the wish goes to Topo. He becomes the MVP because he eliminated so many more fighters. Sure, Jiren did get a few eliminations, mainly with Universe 3 once he defeated Donnie Raza. But Topo has one of the highest elimination counts of anyone that was in the tournament. He showed some pretty good strategies, and while Zeno is impressed with Jiren's strength, well, he didn't really do much. He just meditated there, and he fought Goku. Zeno and the Grand Priest are much more interested in Topo. This kind of does bum Jiren out. But it is true. Topo did do more for the team, and he does have to accept that. So what will Topo wish for? He could wish for anything he wants. And he begins to think, what is the most just thing he could wish for? Something that serves justice everywhere, worthy of a pride trooper. He has the perfect idea. He's met some great people during this tournament, specifically Azir from Universe 7, as well as those other interesting people like Vegeta and Goku. It would be a shame if they were to just be a race like this, not to mention all the other lives lost in this tournament. So, the best wish for him? Revive all the universes. Give them another chance. Thankfully, Zena wanted this, and this is what Super Shenron grants. Jiren's surprised to see this too, but he understands why. Interesting. He could probably learn some things from Topo. Maybe he was being too much of a recluse. 
while Topa was actually acting more like what a pride trooper would act like, being more concerned about others than his own strength. Universe 7 is just as surprised when they're revived. Wait, they were just erased a moment ago, what happened? They're not really sure, but things go back to normal and they can't really question it. But then they realize, Tobo must have been the winner, and as he remembers, when he fought Topo, he kept talking about justice, and he guesses this was what Topo saw as justice. Huh, it's weird how things worked out, but obviously they're all fine with it. Azir though is interesting. Topo's pretty similar to him. Well, not really, but they do have some similarities. He wants to learn more about the other universes. Goku's the same way, but mainly because of the strength of the other universes. It would be pretty fun to fight them again. They begin thinking about this, wondering if they'll ever see these strong fighters again. In the meantime, they'll continue to improve themselves. And with that, we'll leave this part off here for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? What do you think will happen next time? Leave any thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try and hit that like hole from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon and get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.